The Angus Bull Unit has successfully operated in tandem with the Beef Expo National Sale for the past 14 years. An open day was held in March at the unit in Manawatu, featuring the top 28 yearling Angus bulls that were being prepared for the 2017 True Test Beef Expo held in May. Cattle get fed differently in the different environments and it's very hard for somebody to go around the countryside and compare animals from one property to another when they've been fed or managed under totally different management systems. So the idea is to bring these bulls here at about a year of age and they farmed here under one environment, under one management system, as one group of bulls, so they have an opportunity to express their genetic potential as best they can under the same environment and same feeding conditions. They're here for sort of six months or a bit over, and in that time they have various tests done on them, they have a genomic test done on them and DNA samples taken from them. They're evaluated for carcass data and structural soundness and all sorts of things as well. So all of that information is collated and goes into the catalogue for the national sale. There's horses for courses and there's various breeders targeting different markets. Some people, you know, are targeting that high-end market in terms of marbled beef. There's huge potential in that area and it's certainly an area where there is a growth in demand for high-quality beef grass-fed beef internationally, and so there'll be breeders targeting that. There'll be other breeders that are happy at the level they've got in terms of carcass qualities in their herds, and they might be targeting some other market, it might be supplying bulls to the dairy industry, so they want in calving ease, or it may be they've, you know, they're supplying all their bulls to commercial beef farmers who want good, strong cattle that'll sustain themselves on steep hill country and um, live to a decent age, a long age, um, so they've got to be structurally correct and all those sort of things. So everybody's got perhaps slightly different emphasis on different traits, but overall everybody's trying to improve across a wide range of traits in, in, in a steady and progressive way. I hope you uh, have had a chance to have a good look at the bulls, and I'm sure that um, you'll agree that there's a very good line-up of cattle out there, and, uh, and hopefully there'll be some there that'll meet most of your... Uh, needs and requirements. Today has really been about having an open day for the breeders who have put bulls in here on this unit and for commercial farmers to come and view the bulls here where they've been all run under one environment since way back in November. You've got stud breeders here that are, are looking for future sires to put into their herds that will take their herd to another level in terms of performance. It might be for growth rates, it might be for calving ease, it could be for carcass quality. But those people will be looking for specific traits that they are wanting in an animal and they'll be assessing structure of the animal, how it walks, um, you know, trying to get a handle on its potential doing ability for its offspring. Depending on the environment that they're taking those animals into and, and the clients of theirs, if they're breeding bulls to sell to commercial farmers, they need to be able to produce cattle that will do well for their clients. Breeders have a number of tools in their toolbox and are incredibly objective with the way they slick their cattle often and sometimes they're subjective. So they combine the, the tools they have uh, to breed cattle that are functional or desirable for market or, or appropriate for um, whatever their, their clients are after. There's a number of objective things they do and the first thing they do is record. So calves will be born and, and they often weigh them at birth and this information is important to contribute towards calving ease. They score the dam on how well it's calved and how well the two-year-old heifers would have calved. And they go on and collect information up to when they wing them at 200 days of age. And all of these things uh, go towards estimated breeding values. And these are estimates of their merit genetically as a parent and what they can pass on. And so we might look at an animal outside here, a bull like this, and we see a, a heavy one and a light one, we say, look, these uh, two different bulls there, and that contributes to what they pass on. We then go on and collect information from animals up to 400 days of age, and go on and see how they weigh then, and then how they weigh at two years, and, and for 600 day weight. Other objective physical measurements include ultrasound scanning for carcass quality. So we measure the, the eye muscle, the size of the eye muscle, uh, the fat externally on the rib and the rump, and how much intramuscular fat those cattle have got. 
Um, we then go on and, and we see how those uh, cows conceive and, and how they weigh. And so we look at things like how heavy the calf is versus the weight of the cow. And we take all of those combination of objective measurements, we combine them into EBVs, and then we express them in dollar terms as an index. And that's uh, about profit and extra value per cow mated. As well as these tools, we also have new technologies called genomics. And that's quite exciting for breeders. And you'll find today here at the Bull Evaluation Unit, all the sires have been tested and we've had a look at, at the genes they have and, and, and some of the genes that are responsible for their performance, performance of their progeny. And it's exciting new technology that allows us to look into their DNA and, and enhance our breeding values to include the information unlocked that we can't see unlocked in their genes. Angus breed has, has had a very good run the last few years, but we don't rest on our laurels. We want to take the breed further ahead, and there's so many opportunities out there, I believe, for increased sales of Angus cattle and to meet the market requirements to ensure that customers are being served a delicious meal every time they have a meal. And if we as breeders keep doing our things right, there's every chance that we will achieve that and, and increase the market share that this breed has within New Zealand. This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.